Now you'll hear from a number of speakers today and we will try to be brief, but we have some very important things to say. Uh, let me first of all give this disclaimer. We are not here to endorse the Republican Party. We are not here to endorse a presidential candidate. We are not here to endorse any party, whether it be libertarian or constitutional or conservative. We are rather here to say to Christians and believing Jews all across America that the Democrat Party has demonstrated itself to be so antithetical, so inimical to the values that we hold dear that it is time for us to come out of that party en masse. We are here to call for a mass exodus of Christians and Jews, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Filipino, to come out of the Democrat Party. It has turned its back on us. It is time that we turn our back on it. That is why we are here. Now, let me come to the issue that precipitates this. Last week at the Democrat convention, they took the unprecedented and historical step of adding same-sex marriage to the Democrat platform. And in doing so, in declaring that same-sex marriage is now part of their platform, part of their, their policy initiative, they have in effect declared that those of us who believe in the Bible, who believe in the God of the Bible, who believe in the Bible's definition of what a family is, that it is a union of one man and one woman and the bonds of holy matrimony as ordained by God, that we have believed a lie, that the Bible is a lie, and indeed they are saying that God is a liar. Now, first of all, let's set the record straight. There is no such thing as same-sex marriage. The moment you say same-sex marriage, you have violated the very definition of what marriage is. Marriage is defined in scripture. God made them male and female. The word for wife is a word that means woman. There is no possibility of there being a marriage between two men or two women. Now you can create such a union and call it that, but it will never be that, no matter how much you call it that. And we are here to say that we as Christians will never, ever accept that definition. Not as long as we have breath in our body, we will continue to oppose it. Now, now we are not here in hatred. We are here in love. Love for our country, love for our fellow citizens. Yes, love even for those with whom we disagree. And we understand that by taking this stand, there are people who will say we're bigots and we're haters and we've gotten used to that. But we would encourage those who don't agree with us to stop using such language and realize we didn't make up the definition of the family to annoy homosexuals. The definition has been around for thousands of years. And there was a time when there was no debate about it. So the fact that we are holding fast to that definition does not mean that we are against anybody. It means that we are for our God and for our faith and for the truth that it reveals. Now, when the Democrats made same-sex marriage part of their official platform, they created an irreconcilable conflict between Christians and believing Jews and the Democrat Party. They have now said to us, we demand that you bow to us and not to your God, not to your Bible, not to your faith. And we are here to say we will never bow. We will continue to stand up for what we believe in, for what God has shown us to be true, and we will do it until Jesus comes. Amen. We will do it as long as there is a country called the United States of America in which there is freedom to do it, and we intend to see to it that there's always this nation and that there's always this freedom in which to stand up for what we believe in. We also want to say to ministers and rabbis, it is time to stand up. It is time to take a stand. It is time to have the courage of your convictions and realize if we do not do so, we are going to lose our culture. When they made that declaration at their convention, they declared war 
on Christianity. Because make no mistake about it, the battle has been going on, but they have just increased the intensity. We see it in the efforts to take down crosses from veterans' memorials. We see it in the effort to tell children, don't put a Bible on your desk. We see it in the effort to sue cities and towns if they dare pray before a city council or a school board meeting or dare mention the name of Jesus. We see it in the ridicule and the opprobrium that was hurled at Dan Cathy, the president of Chick-fil-A, for simply saying, I believe in marriage and family as God ordained it. Democrat mayor stood up and said, you are not welcome in our city. Your business is not welcome in our city. Leave aside for the moment that they were in violation of the Constitution to dare try to persecute an American citizen for simply expressing his First Amendment rights. But they have set up an atmosphere of persecution, of hatred, of hostility against Christians. That somehow there's something wrong with us. That we dare hold fast to our values. And I believe that that is the atmosphere that allowed a man to walk into the Family Research Council with a gun. With the intention of killing every Christian he could find. He has become convinced that we are haters. Little does he know, we forgive him already, we love him, we love those who oppose us. But we will never back down from our values. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed of our Bibles. We are not ashamed of the word of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. Now, finally, before I bring up other speakers, let me also add this. Since I am an American of African descent, I want to say to members of the body of Christ who are also black, it is time to end this slavishness, this dependence, this absolute sycophancy that the Democrat Party has demanded of the black community, no matter what, you must vote Democrat. Now, they have lied. They have said that if you don't vote Democrat, they're going to put you back in slavery. The vice president just said it. They're going to put you all back in chains. This, these lies have circulated throughout the black community, and they do so during every election period. Uh, they have lied and said that if you don't vote for Democrats, they're going to take away your voting rights. In fact, the latest lie that's circulating on the Internet and on Facebook now is if you don't vote Democrat, they're going to do away with the Martin Luther King holiday. Yeah. Now, these lies are outrageous. They are ridiculous. And it is time for the black community to stand up and say, we will not be manipulated. We will not be treated like pawns in your power game. We will not be treated like Pavlov's dog <laughs> salivating every time you raise the issue of race. Uh, I want to say personally that the Ku Klux Klan did not de do nearly as much to destroy black life as Planned Parenthood has done. Millions of black babies, unborn, unable to live because of the union between Planned Parenthood and the Democrat Party. I also want to add that I, and I know that there are millions of black folks across this country like me, I am personally insulted by the comparison of being black to being homosexual. Now, the, the, very, the very idea of coming out implies that you can be in and nobody know. So you come out to let people know. I don't have to come out to let anybody know I'm black. I mean, it is an, it is an indelible outward characteristic that it says nothing about our character. It says nothing about our morality. It says nothing about our sexuality. And to compare the two is one of the most specious and illogical and irrational comparisons I have ever heard in the history of mankind. And, and, and in fact, we need to understand something. This is done for the purpose of manipulating people emotionally and getting them to buy into the acceptance of homosexuality, same-sex marriage, and these sorts of ideas, or as they like to put it, LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender behavior. Because if you don't do that, that's just like what was done the black people. Well, you know, maybe they need a little history lesson. <laughs> but I have never heard of homosexuals being in slavery. I've never heard of them being in Jim Crow. 
Uh, I've never heard of homosexual lynchings in the thousands. I have never heard of the vast discrimination that went on against people simply because of the color of their skin. And to compare the marriage between a white person and a black person to the marriage between two persons of the same sex tells me that you have failed your biology course. <laughs> because race doesn't matter. God defined marriage as a union between one man and one woman. And so I simply want to say to you that today is not the end. It is the beginning. It's the beginning of a movement to call our country back to the faith of our founding fathers, back to the values upon which they built this nation, back to the truths upon which it was established, and back to the idea that we can be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is time for Christians and believing Jews to stand up like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did thousands of years ago and say, we will not bow to the music of your moral relativism. We will not bow to the siren song of your political idolatry. We will stand up for the idea that there is such a thing as truth. There are absolutes that God is God and beside him there is no other, that he is real, that our founding fathers believe that he is the one who gave us our rights and freedom. And if we have anything to do with it, we who are here have anything to do with it, this country will remain a nation that is God-fearing and a nation that recognizes blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God bless you. Thank you.